All right, so the point of this video is to go through a couple other types of distributions and show how we can get the probability generating function for those distributions. All right, so the first one we're going to look at is this one right here, which is a Bernoulli. We know it's Bernoulli because it says where x is the number of sixes when an unbiased six-sided die is rolled once. This could very easily be made into a binomial uh, expansion, but because it's only being rolled once, then we can treat it as Bernoulli. All right. So when we look at this, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, what is the probability that x will equal 0? Well, I could get 0 sixes. That's very possible. In fact, I'm going to get 0 5 6 of the time. Okay, and then what is the probability that x equals 1? Because remember, x can be anything in your natural number set. So x equals 1. Well, I could get 1 6 if I roll the die once. That would be a 1 6 probability. Now, for anything else, where k is greater than or equal to 2, then the probability is going to be 0, right? Because I can't get more than 1, 6 if I'm only rolling the die once. So with this, <coughs> I'll now set up my probability genera generating function, g of t, which, as usual, we can write it out as p0 plus p1 t to the first plus p2 t squared, and so on and so forth. The probability of getting 0 is 5 over 6. And then we will add the probability of getting 1, 6, which is 1 over 6, times t to the first power. And then note that anything else, probability of getting 2, 6s, sixes, 3, 6s, sixes, and so on and so forth, is 0. And so those all go away. So I'm left with simply 5, 6 plus. 1 over 6t. Now, because this is finite, and this is something that we didn't talk about in class, because this is a finite sequence, then t is allowed to be any real number. And we'll talk a little bit more about that parameter of t later, but for now, just know that if it is a finite sequence, then t can be any real number. Uh, it's for infinite sequences that we actually have to limit it because t then has to work such that it fits within a certain range. Okay, and, and I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, so let's move along to this right here. So we've got x is now a geometric distribution where our ratio is 1 over 6, where x is the number of rolls required to get a 6. So how many times do I have to roll this before I finally get a 6? All right, so if we think about this, the probability that it will take 0 rolls to get a 6 is 0, because if you don't roll it, you can't get a 6. Okay, the probability that it will take 1 roll to get a 6 is simply 1 over 6, because if I roll it once, there's a 1 out of 6 chance that I'll get a 6. Okay, the probability that it takes two rolls, that means that the first time was not a roll, it was not a 6, so 5 out of 6, and the second time was a 6. Now, we don't need the NCR because these can't happen in a different order. Okay, if I'm rolling twice, it's because the first time I didn't get a 6. So there you go move on to the probability of 3. Now that means, of course, that it didn't give me a 6 the first two times, and then the third time it did. All right, and so on and so forth from, from there on. So if I write out my g of t, then I see <coughs> p0 plus p1t plus p2t squared, plus p3t cubed, and so on and so forth. So p0 is 0, so I can leave that off. p1 is 1 6, so 1 6t, plus p2 
2, which is 5 6 times 1 6 t squared plus 5 6 squared times 1 6 t cubed, and so on and so forth. Now, that shows what I have. I am actually going to do what I can to simplify this. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and write this as a summation. So it's going to be the summation of that probability, which is 1 sixth times 5 sixths. Now, this, I want this to be able to go from k equals 1. I could do 0, but 0 is 0, so I don't really need that. So I need to be able to add from 1 up to infinity because I can keep going. I could keep rolling that die and never actually get a 6. Not likely, but it could happen, right, that I just keep rolling and never get a 6. Now the power of the 5 over 6 has to be all of the rolls up to this point except for the last one. So that'll be k minus 1. And so hopefully you see there's my 1 sixth. In the case of uh, 5 6, that's my, my, my second. So that would be uh, 2 minus 1 would be the second term there. And so then it would be 1 5 over 6, which would be for the second term. For the first term, I don't have any 5 over 6s because it would be 1 minus 1. So that would be a 0 power. So I'm left just with 1 over 6. Now I have to include the t as well. So notice that the power of the t corresponds to k. And so it's t to the k. All right. So this summation right here represents the summation of all of these pieces right here. And that doesn't make sense. Then maybe just go back and review geometric sequences and how we are able to write them as a summation. OK. Now at this point, I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit. Now, knowing that it's a geometric sequence, I know that for specific values, for specific restrictions, I'm actually able to get a summation of an infinite geometric sequence. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so that I get that. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to see, well, this is going to be my u1 right here. OK. And the thing inside the parentheses should be my r. But I do have a small problem in that I've got this, but I've also got the tk. <coughs> and as long as I got that t to the k power, I don't really have a geometric sequence here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take one of those t's. t for this specific situation has to be, will be a constant. And so I'm going to take one of those t's, and I'm going to pull it out. And so I'm going to take one t, pull it out, which will now give me the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 6 times 5 over 6 k minus 1. And if I take out one of those t's, then I'm left with t to the k minus 1, because I took out one of those t's. So now you'll see that these both have the same power, the 5, 6, and the t. So I can again rewrite it as the summation with the t in the front from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 6 times 5 t over 6 all to the k minus 1 power. At this point, I now have a geometric sequence. And I can set it up in such a way that I can find the summation of that geometric sequence. So hopefully, you remember your formula for finding the summation of an infinite geometric sequence, which is simply just u1 over 1 minus r. So I'm looking at this right here. And so u1 is 1 over 6. And so now we're going to kind of put this together. So I've got t times the summation of all of this, which will be u1, which is 1 over 6, all over 1 minus r. Now r is 5t over 6. Now remember, this only works if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And so what we're actually going to have to do here is we're going to have to say, well, r is 5t over 6. That means the absolute value of 5t over 6 has to be less than 1. 
So we do have to make this restriction. And this goes back to what I was saying before. In the previous question, you may remember that we were talking about, I mentioned the fact that if this is finite, that t can be anything. There's no, no restrictions on t. However, in this situation, there are restrictions on t because this geometric sequence thing only works if that r, this r to the k minus 1 power, is less than 1. And so we are going to have those restrictions. So the 5t over 6 has to be less than 1. It also has to be greater than negative 1, right? So we should then be able to solve for t. And in the end, you should get that t is between 6 over 5 and negative 6 over 5. And so as long as t is between those, there's an act actually a, a range for t that it can be. So we then have restrictions because our g of t is infinite. Now, if we kind of finish this off, we don't really like fractions inside of fractions. All right, so what I'm going to do is multiply the top and bottom by 6, which will give me t times 1 over 6 times 6 would be 1. 6 times the bottom would give me 6 minus 5t. And put it all together to simply get t over 6 minus 5t. And so this is my probability generating function for the geometric uh, distribution that I started with. All right, so that's all for this video. I would just want to show again two other probability generating functions. Your homework tonight is just going to be setting up probability generating functions. All right, and then when we get into class tomorrow, we'll try to kind of put some of it together and, and maybe make a little bit of sense of it. All right.